Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week a weekly market review. On a Tuesday, we have some events running over the weekend, so that's why this today's uh, weekly market review is on a Tuesday. But over the weekend, we saw that uh, the market as a whole, especially on the US side, uh, most of the indices hit their all-time high already not seen before. So I think market is uh, in a very good shape right now. And maybe Gerald will help us to decipher what happened last week and what are, what are the things that we should be looking out for this week. Hi everyone, uh, thanks so much Sunny. So I think the good news for stock investors um, would be the surge that we saw in the US market. So that's something that I'll talk about later and also look at how the Singapore market has moved in the past week. Okay, uh, before we start, just the usual disclaimer that the sharing is for information purposes only and should not be taken to be financial advice. Uh, if you find the sharing helpful, uh, do leave us a review on Google. And if you have questions that you would like to discuss with Sunny and myself, uh, we have a monthly ASIA session. Uh, to join the session, you can actually participate as a SIAS member. Uh, these are the details to sign up as a member, and membership will cost $12 per year or just $1 per month. Okay, so we'll start by looking at how the various indices performed. Um, I think the notable development in the past week is the record high reached by the S&P 500 index. Okay, so that's the benchmark that investors commonly use for the US market. Uh, it went above the 4,800 level last week and had a record high of 4,840. Uh, we also saw strong gains across uh, Dow Jones and Nasdaq. In fact, if you look at the gains, a lot of it still continue to be led by the large cap tech stocks, uh, which is why we saw a 2.3% gain for the Nasdaq as well. Okay, uh, closer to home, the STI actually declined. Uh, this is mainly because uh, of the fact that the Chinese market has been very weak. So while the US market continued to power forward, uh, the weaker sentiment towards the Chinese stock market actually brought the STI down. Okay, uh, the other interesting development for me would be um, if I were to look at the bond yields, okay, in the past few weeks, uh, we saw that the US Treasury yields have been coming down and that was one of the big drivers of the stock market rally. But actually, in the past week, uh, the US 10-year government bond yield actually went up above 4% once again. Okay, so we are no longer in a straightforward trajectory where uh, the bond yields are coming down and at the same time, the stock market is going up. Uh, but actually, in the past week, uh, the 10-year government bond yield went up to above 4% once again. Um, what is actually driving this? We actually see a uh, lower probability of a rate cut in the March Federal Reserve meeting. Okay, so um, if you were to look at the expectations on the upcoming January meeting, uh, most investors are expecting that the Fed will keep the interest rates unchanged. But if you were to go to the March meeting, uh, if you were to look at this data one week ago, uh, there'll be more investors who actually expect that the Fed will start cutting interest rates in March. But if we were to look at the latest data point, then what we see here is that um, actually there is now a heightened probability that they will keep interest rates unchanged in the March meeting. Okay, so this is a, a similar uh, chart that effectively shows this reduced probability of a March rate cut and a heightened probability of the Fed uh, keeping interest rates where it is. Um, in the March 2024 meeting. Okay, if we were to look at the performance of the Singapore market, we saw that the Singapore market actually came down slightly in the past week. Uh, if you look at the top gainers, um, once again, we see Yang Zijiang as one of the top performers. Uh, it was up 1.2% in the past week, and we will share some of the news that actually led to this outperformance in the past week. Okay, uh, outside of that, we also saw some of the Jardine related names, uh, Jardine Cycle and Carriage, Jardine Medicine, actually making up the other top performers in the STI last week. 
Okay, if you were to look at the worst performance, I thought this chart is a bit more interesting uh, because what we see here in terms of the similarities is that you've got a number of REITs that have lost some of the gains um, in November and December um, because the bond yields are moving up once again. Uh, so Maple Tree, Pan Asia Commercial Trust, uh, Fraser's Logistics and Commercial Trust, uh, Maple Tree Logistics Trust uh, with losses of about 3 to 4% in the past week. Okay, So this is what I meant earlier by uh, not so straightforward like what we saw in November and December where we saw a similar rally in both stocks as well as bonds. Okay, uh, The other names that perform uh, quite badly in the past week would be the names with China exposure. Uh, so we see DFI Retail Group down 3.7%, uh, Hong Kong Land down by 6.3%, together with weakness in the entire Chinese market. Okay, what were some of the key news that moved the market in the past week? Uh, we saw the Yang Zetiang Shipbuilding uh, was once again one of the top gainers. Uh, it's a name that we have uh, talked about quite a bit in the previous weekly market review. Uh, so if you want to get an update of the company, do refer to the previous sharing. Uh, but what happened in the past week that drove the further share price gain is that the company announced a contract uh, to build six 13,000 TEU container ships. And these are fairly sizable contracts. Okay, So that actually boosted the share price of Yang Zetiang Shipbuilding. Uh, outside of that, uh, SIA reported the passenger traffic volume for December, uh, which is, of course, a peak travel season. Okay, so growing by 15.8% compared to the previous year. Uh, but because of the increase in capacity, uh, the load factor actually decreased slightly. Uh, next, for those of you who are following the tech stocks in Singapore, uh, we saw AEM Holdings actually uh, announcing that they uncovered a shortfall in its inventory levels uh, due to its year-end stock-taking exercise, and that would actually affect its probability for the year ending December 2023. Okay, So since we have discussed Yang Zetiang shipbuilding in the previous weeks, uh, we'll spend a bit more time today to go through SIA as well as AEM. Okay, so we'll start by uh, discussing SIA. Uh, it is a stock that many investors often ask us about. It's a name that many of us in Singapore are definitely familiar with, especially if we are traveling uh, over the December holidays. Okay, so what we see here for SIA share price uh, is actually quite a bit of volatility in 2023. Uh, spiked in the second quarter and towards uh, July, um, and then thereafter, we saw a correction in the third quarter uh, before flatlining with some slight gains uh, over the past one to two months. Okay, So what is driving this movement in SIA share price and what are some of the key drivers uh, we should be looking out for? Okay, So earlier, we shared that um, the company announced the passenger load factor for the month of December. And I think it is really reflecting the trend that we have seen for the past two quarters. Okay, so um, the load factor reached a peak uh, sometime in the first quarter of fiscal year 23 or 24, uh, which is effectively uh, the quarter ending June. Okay, so you see that that was driven by the post-COVID uh, travel recovery. Uh, and the load factor actually reached a high of about 89% uh, during this quarter. Okay, uh, It came down slightly in the second quarter of the fiscal year, which is the quarter ending September, uh, so about 88.6%. And so far, that is the trend that we see likewise for the calendar year fourth quarter of fiscal year third quarter data. Okay, So still above the pre-COVID levels, uh, but no longer having the kind of recovery that we saw like after the first few quarters after the reopening. Okay, so um, we'll continue to monitor this trend to see whether uh, we see a continued decline in the passenger load factor. Okay, but what has been coming off is the cargo uh, yields. Um, so remember after COVID, there was a supply chain bottleneck um, the uh, shipping routes were very tight and as a result, the uh, volume that they were able to bring on the cargo side actually came up 
and as a result, the yield that they were able to enjoy was fairly high as well. Okay, but that has come down over the past few quarters. And if you recall, we shared a few weeks ago uh, with some of the concerns around the Red Sea situation. Um, there could be certain hopes that this cargo yield would then start rebounding once again. Okay, so how does that translate to the profit of SIA uh, with the surge in the passenger load factor in the first quarter of the fiscal year 2324? They had a record quarterly net profit um, during that quarter and that actually led to the very strong surge in the share price to about $8 per share. Uh, the profit has come off slightly in the second quarter um, and that is why the share price has pretty much flatlined um, and we would need a further catalyst uh, for the share price to actually rebound further from current levels. Okay, so if I were to look at the um, general analyst expectations of where SIA share price is going to be, uh, the consensus share price target uh, as of 22nd January is $6.60. Uh, so not too far away from its current share price, uh, which is why most analysts generally have a, a more neutral view towards the company's share price. Okay, next we'll look at AEM Holdings. Uh, for those of you who are following the semiconductor sector closely, uh, following the hardware tech sector closely, uh, this is probably one of the names that you are looking at. Uh, so what we see here is a very sharp plunge in the share price last week uh, after they announced the inventory shortfall that will affect its full year profit. Okay, So uh, I just checked the latest company announcement. Uh, they have further shared the exact amount that this inventory shortfall would actually impact its profit. So about 18 to 25 million of its pre-tax profit. And as a result, I think that has actually dampened the investor sentiment towards the stock. Okay, uh, But the good news uh, that they have shared is that this is not linked to any fraud or illegal wrongdoings, but actually due to some human error uh, because of the enterprise resource system that they have. Okay, um, so outside of this, what are some of the other concerns that investors have for AM? Uh, if you were to look at actually the revenue, it has come off quite sharply in the first nine months of 2023 uh, from about 747 million in the nine months of 2022 to 387 million in the nine months of 2023. Okay. Uh, in terms of where the decline is coming from, uh, we see that the test and automation equipment revenue is down. The consumables uh, revenue is down as well. Okay, so with the decline in revenue, we have also seen the profit of the company being impacted. Okay, so um, this is as of the first half of 2023, uh, since for the third quarter, they just provided an operational update. Uh, but already in the first half of 2023, uh, we see the decline in its revenue. And with that uh, decline in the profit before tax as well, uh, such that from the first half of 2022, it was above 100 million. But by the first half of 2023, it has come down to 24 million. Okay, so what is driving this decline in revenue for AEM? Uh, a big part of what AEM's business is tied to would be the semiconductor supply chain. Uh, and based on the um, forecast of Gartner, effectively what we have seen throughout 2023 would be this uh, excess supply in the entire semiconductor value chain, okay? So the oversupply started uh, sometime last year um, and effectively caused this weakness in exports uh, throughout the uh, economies that are very tied to the semiconductor supply chain as well as impacted AEM's revenue. Okay, so what are the expectations of the semiconductor uh, sector going forward? Uh, this is where there might be more good news, okay? So if you look at the overall uh, semiconductor revenue, uh, it came down in 2023, okay, uh, by about 11%. Uh, this is because of the oversupply situation that we spoke about, uh, because of weakness in some of the end markets, like uh, lower demand for uh, some of the smartphones, as well as uh, the hardware such as personal computers. 
Okay, but if you look at 2024, uh, expected to show a recovery. Uh, part of it driven by the uh, AI boom uh, that's also leading to higher demand for some of these chips. Okay, so if this recovery were to come true, then that could actually present some good news uh, for tech companies that are actually exposed towards the semiconductor value chain. Okay, so I've talked about two stocks today, SIA as well as AM. Uh, we have uh, quite a busy week that is coming up uh, because the Singapore REITs are going to start reporting their results. And we are going to see Maple Tree Logistics Trust, Suntech REIT, uh, Maple Tree Industrial Trust, as well as Kepler DC REIT announcing their earnings this week. Okay, uh, for those of you who follow the US market, we also have got two big results. Uh, Netflix, which is coming out on Tuesday, as well as Tesla, which is something that a lot of investors are looking out for, uh, announcing on 24th of January on a Wednesday. Okay, for those of you uh, who prefer uh, to look at some of the safer assets, we have the Singapore one-year T-bill auction on Thursday, as well as the closing of the Singapore savings bond application this Friday. Okay, so uh, with that, I'll hand over to Sunny, who will share with us what is the technical indicators actually telling us after the S&P 500 actually reached the record high last week. Okay, let me share my screen first. Okay, thanks, Gerald, for the uh, very detailed sharing of what happened last week on the Singapore market, as well as uh, giving us some insights into what is going to happen in the coming weeks. We are also expecting the uh, PCE index data on the US side, which will give us some insight into the inflation situation now in US. And also there's the GDP, uh, US GDP data on uh, this Thursday as well. So these are some of the two uh, big economic uh, data that I'm watching out for and how you affect uh, the markets or the indices as a whole. So let's uh, go to the Singapore STI index first and what happened last week. So in the past uh, two or three weeks, we have identified the STI index probably around this area is the first support zone that we are looking at. Okay, So last week, we have a breach of this support zone and then you have a, a sort of a, a low somewhere towards the 3,127 points on the 18th of January, which was uh, last Thursday. So what does this mean? It means that you have negated uh, this uh, support zone and this has been penetrated. And both of the indicators, the RSI and the MACD, is uh, showing further weakness. And thereby, the STI index likely have more room to pull back or to correct before we reach a more uh, sustainable or more, much more firmer support level. So where is uh, STI likely going to hit? Looking at the MACD indicator, uh, we have turned negative uh, as of last week. And this... Uh, this uh, momentum that we are looking at, that means the gap between the MACD line and the signal line has been widening. Today is a slightly positive day, or I would say a, a, bit, a bit of a flat day. That's why you see the uh, the candle, the final last candle that you see over here uh, on Tuesday today, which is uh, a bit saying that the momentum might might be subsiding here. But uh, the trading day just started and has not ended. So it depends on what, what kind of... Uh, numbers, what kind of closing that we have today to get the confirmation whether the momentum is likely to uh, extend further downwards or is there a subsiding of the downtrend momentum. So, but I believe based on the past one week of reading this moment, this downwards momentum, this negative momentum based on the MACD indicator, is likely to continue. The RSI has also breached below the 50-point neutral mark and may be pushed down by the 14 days uh, moving average of the RSI. So this is another sign that uh, likely the STI index will be losing momentum and trend and likely going to trend downwards in uh, in the week ahead. So where is the STI likely going to find the next support level? So if we have negated this level over here, which is uh, using the previous support of uh, the support between the August low as well as the October low, then the next low that we are looking at would be this line over here, which would be where you see some support coming in towards the end of last year. Okay, So this is the next support level that we are looking at, and I'm going to highlight uh, that area right now. Okay, So probably around this area, 
will be a, the next support level that we are looking at. Okay, so we are looking for, in trading, we are looking for a perfect setup. That means if you look at the indicator, we want the RSI to go below the 30 point mark, which means that the, st the stock or the counter is uh, oversold right now. So we are at 47, the condition is not right. And for the MACD, if you are going, if you are intending to go long, we would want the MACD line to have a signs of crossing above the uh, signal line or above the zero baseline, thereby telling us that uptrend momentum is uh, gaining traction. So we don't have that kind of setup at this moment. And if you look in the history, those points comes in, you see in October where we reached a low over here, RSI hit, uh, went below 30. And then we have a crossover of the MACD above the signal line, signaling the change that the downtrend uh, has changed. And then, uh, prices start to go up. So at this moment, the indicators does not suggest that on the STI index. Hence, uh, more pullback is expected on the STI. And we are looking at support, uh, probably going to test the 3,100 points level. And that would be that would be a time where we need to revisit and see whether that support is firm enough for it to hold and whether we would have the opportunity to go long over there. But as of now, uh, there's still a lot of weakness in the STI index. And just as we are speaking, STI index starts to turn negative already. So hold on to your horses before going long on the STI index or even some of the major banks uh, on, in Singapore market for now. So we still expect some pullback on the STI index. Next, let me move to the US indices. So record all-time high again and again and again for the past uh, one or a few weeks or so, I would say. So we have already touched, for the Dow Jones Index, we touched the 38,000 handle already. We are just one point above that. So where is Dow Jones Index uh, likely going to hit going forward? Okay, so I would just reiterate, la, I believe uh, last the previous weekly market review, I said that uh, the all the three US indices are at the all-time high. There is not much of a reference of uh, where the index could go from here, but then it looks like the... Uh, the index is uh, pretty much very stretched at this moment. And so far, the earnings seasons that uh, the results have been published has been quite okay and able to support the devaluations that we are seeing right now. So the the index now is uh, on, on the high side and matching that kind of expectation. But I would say that um, there is slightly now a, a the most of the prices uh, pricing in right now is already uh, on the high side. And if there's any slight misses, then a correction will likely happen. And that's what I'm looking out for. If we are looking at a correction, a pullback happening, then the previous high that we see a few years ago, because this is the this zone here is the recent high that we see, and the previous high that we see in over here in the beginning of 2022 or the end of 2021, that would be the first support level that we will be looking at for the Dow Jones Index at least. Okay, just let me reset the charts to the this year chart view okay so this is the previous level which is the uh, 37000 level okay somewhere around this 36950 uh 36950 points level was the previous high that we saw in the early part of uh, 2022 so that is the first uh, support level i'm looking at and i'm also looking at the uh, uh, exponential moving average which is the blue color line which indicates this is the 50 days moving average over here uh would likely catch up with where the index is moving right now and then find a consensus between the previous high uh, as well as the 50 days moving average and that will provide uh, some of uh, a much firmer landing ground for the dow jones index to consider getting on the long side but at this moment i think the index is a bit stretched and uh that could there, there's no room for errors. There's no room for the earnings to, to miss. If there's a big earning misses, then a pullback might happen. And if you look at the uh, MACD indicator, um, I would say the negative momentum has started at the beginning of this year, but then as the earnings results come along, it has been holding up and sort of um, uh, pushing back this negative momentum. But none, nevertheless, the reading on the MACD indicator is still negative. And although we still we do see that the subside the we do see a few uh, subsiding candles or or bar charts on the MACD histogram to say that this negative momentum is subsiding, and RSI is also starting to retest the seventy point uh, overbought level again. And if we go into history, every time it goes above seventy point, it signals to us that uh there is a, a high chance that uh, a pullback might happen. So for the Dow Jones index, uh, not getting in right now, waiting for a pullback to happen. 
uh, and we get the firmer support on the 50 days moving average at 36,600 or the previous high at 36,900 before we consider looking at the Dow Jones index again. Okay. Next, the broader S&P 500 index is even more bullish. Okay, so now we have uh, reached the 4,850 points level. So the so same thing, the previous high that we saw in early part of 2022, that level is at 4,818 points. So we are more or less uh, about uh, 30, 40 points away from that uh, previous high. And we are looking at support level at the 50 days moving average at least because the uh, 20 days moving average in green is where the trending support will be. 50 days is a, a pullback or a pullback support that will come in, that will happen. And 100 days is the pivot point whether there is a change in trend. So we are looking at the 50 days moving average first at the 4,656 points. So 200 points away from the current, the last closing price that we saw yesterday. The MACD indicator, uh, Turn positive, but as you can see, it has been uh, pretty much elevated uh, since the beginning of the year and towards the end of last year as well. We have most of the we have most of the reading from the MACD negative this year. That means uh, uh I will still round it off for this month at least in January. We are still looking at a negative MACD uh, kind of a reading. Okay, RSI is also starting to test the seventy point level again, signaling that we may be uh reaching the overbought uh, mark again and thereby a pullback is likely to happen. So market is uh, perfectly priced now. There's no room for error, similar to the Dow Jones Index. Next, let's move to the uh, tech-heavy uh, NASDAQ Composite Index. Uh, a point to note here, I think I look at NVIDIA stock itself. This month alone is up like about 20%. So the NASDAQ Composite Index, the Magnificent 7, is still preferred. Uh, is still the preferred uh, stocks that investors like and will, will likely be those uh, counters that will be leading the index forward. And of course, this uh this uh gains my spread to the other sectors as well. But the leading one will still be the Magnificent Seven, which is a uh, which is a uh, similar to where the Nasdaq Composite Index is moving. So we also have an all time high over here, closing at a uh, fifteen thousand three hundred and sixty point. Previous support that we see is around the fifteen thousand one hundred and fifty points. That was the December high that we saw, and then we have a bit of a pullback there in December. Okay, for the MACD indicator, we can see a, a, a positive reading again. That means that uh, we the, the momentum now is into the positive territory. So it's expected to move up further. And the RSI is at 69, one point below the 70 point uh, uh, overbought mark or a pullback will happen. So this is, uh, this is interesting to note. So especially the Tesla data that will be coming out today might be another factor of whether the NASDAQ uh, Composite Index might push higher. Uh, lead, leading uh, led, being led by the tech stocks. So I believe uh, for all three indices, we are uh, in a very elevated territory right now, waiting for a pullback to go long again. So for now, I think anybody who is trading all these three indices do need to be careful and look carefully uh, at the earnings as well as the macro data that is coming in. Indicators-wise and the chart-wise, uh, they are very, pretty frothy and we are looking at some pullbacks towards the uh, support level or towards... Uh, or looking for signs of the MACD and the RSI or technical indicators to show that uh, it has gone in, it has come down to a level where we are safe, we have a safer ground to get in. Okay, so that is my take uh, this week for all the uh, three major indices. Final words, Gerald. Yes, yeah, so I think you have summed it up very well. Uh, we see that the US market is already at fairly elevated levels, and we have quite a number of important data points coming up whether is it through the earnings season or whether is it in terms of the macroeconomic data. So those uh, data points will effectively determine investor sentiment towards the market and we'll continue to keep a lookout for them to understand whether the US market will continue to trend higher and whether the Chinese market will actually continue to fall. Yes, so... A lot of things happening this week, and I think that is all the time that we have today. So I'd like to thank Gerald again for uh, spending time with us this morning doing this uh, weekly market review recording. And do, if you do want to catch up with what's happening in the market, do catch us again next week in the next weekly market review on Monday. Okay, Thank you, everyone. Thank you.